Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know about taking a Corrupting Fever character all the way from Twilight Strand to Wave 30 Simulacrum, uh, step by step. Now, um, this is not a guide, it's more of just a collection of all of the resources I've compiled on the build and all of my testing, uh, and for that purpose, I would recommend that if you're not an experienced player, you do not league start this. This is not a beginner friendly league starter. There's a lot of small pitfalls. Uh, to give you guys an example, if you're not comfortable crafting your own 10 plus exalt bow, this isn't for you. If you're not comfortable making gem swaps and uh, a little bit of a build transition in act four, this build isn't for you. And if you're not comfortable crafting your own gear in general, again, it's not for you. It's a more advanced build and it's got a lot of intricate that you need to pay very close attention to and it's going to require a little bit of problem solving as everyone's character is going to be different and you can't emulate exactly what uh, you're going to see in this video exactly. Having said that though, I prepared as much material as possible and I'm going to take you through step by step uh, to make sure you guys have uh, basically all of the information that you need. Okay, so there's going to be a few things I'm not going to cover here because just time constraints. I did a take of this and it was an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so we're not going to cover how Corrupting Fever works. I'm sorry, I've covered that in another video. Check that out. We're not going to show basically what the build looks like as there's going to be links down below which shows it in... I think I did the Formed, I did 100% Delirium, and I think I did Shaper. Check out the links below if you want to see what it looks like and how it plays with pretty good gear. Uh, and we're also going to, not going to cover what it looks like for the leveling. I'll give you a quick demonstration, but I did a full 5 hour and 20 minute run of Acts 1 to 10. You guys can watch that, play along with it, follow along with it. You can check that out if you want. Um, it's basically on my YouTube and it's got timestamps and everything. You can see every single little detail of how to level it in 3.15 and then it's going to be even better in 3.16. Uh, so... In addition to all this, I have created a massive document for you guys here. Um, so this is going to be your source of truth for Corrupting Fever. It has a step-by-step -step, uh, of each of the stages of the build, from the acts to early mapping, um, to swapping between the different builds, and then obviously to getting and upgrading your endgame character. Uh, and then we also have a really, really extensive leveling cheat sheet here, which has basically what links you're going to need, um, what items to look for, what level you should be on certain bosses, as well as things to buy. And then in addition to that, I also have some mini crafting guides, a little bit of notes here on um, the kind of items that you need to be picking up and um, some ways in which you can make it. So for example, the clusters, I have on average how many fossils it's going to take you to get the, the nodes you need. We'll go over that. And then we also have that for the mid budget here. And we got a little bit less uh, detail here on the, on the high budget because I expect players who get here are going to know a little bit more. Um, but overall, it should be pretty extensive here. Uh, and then we, of course, also have an accompanying five POBs. Uh, so to take you through step by step at each of the different stages here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, to kind of map out your full journey here, let me take you through it here. So as a Corrupting Fever build, you've got plenty of transitions that you need to get through, uh, and each of them you're going to get more and more powerful. So to start out the game, in Acts 1-4, to four, you're going to be playing Steel Skills, as they're incredibly powerful on Duelist, and they're going to make your first early act leveling very, very easy. And we're going to go over that in detail in just a minute here. After you beat Malachi and you hit level 38, you're going to swap over to a Bleed Slinger, assuming you have the requisite um, four links available, but we'll talk about how to acquire those in uh, just a few minutes here, but that's going to make it so that you're basically ready and you're online and you're going to be super, super powerful for Acts 5 to 10, as well as early maps. Um, throughout early maps, you're basically going to be upgrading your Bleed Slinger until you're at a point in which you no longer need to sling a like, Sanguinate anymore, and then you can just swap over to pure Corrupting Fever uh, Tenetic Blast, which you can see here I have some notes on as well. After accumulating some currency, you're going to begin to craft your items for Tornado Shot, and once you have the really important items, you can swap over to Tornado Shot, in which... Uh, point, you're basically a clear speed beast and you're a fully fledged tornado shot character and you'll have some of the best clear in the game alongside very, very fast movement speed due to your gladiator um, challenger charges. Next comes more damage uh, as well as considerable more tankiness. The full build ends up with like 100k armor. We'll get into that uh, in just a bit here. Um, and then of course you can go further on beyond and you can get into stuff like Volnon hit, synthesized rings and uh, scourged mods and all sorts of stuff like that later on. Um, we're going to focus primarily on the start as I feel like that's most of the time going to be the most relevant here. We will talk a little bit about how it gets in the end. But it's suffice to say once you get into the later POBs, this thing is an absolute beast. It's going to 
have one of the best chances at doing Wave 30 Simulacrum. The only thing I don't think it's going to be very good at is the new um, uh, five ways. Uh, it just doesn't have that high in terms of burst single target and it can't leverage Headhunter to cheese damage either. So that's pretty much the only thing it can't do. It can do 100% Delirium. Uh, it can do all of that stuff. Look in the links below if you want to see any examples of that. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good build. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's talk leveling. This is gonna be the most relevant part for everyone and the part which is actually the most difficult out of the entire game for this build. Acts one to four is gonna require the most intense thought and it's gonna be the most difficult. Let's take you through it. Um, so. We're going to go through the cheat sheet here. We're going to talk about the, the, the weapons as well as the, uh, the acts and the gems you need to pick up. And then I'm going to take you through the POB leveling tree and kind of talk about what you're going to be wanting picking up uh, at what point and what you're going to want to be doing when. Okay, so in Act 1, your primary goal is going to be making sure that you have um, you know, stuff in every slot uh, and then you're picking up your gems and you're going to be starting out with Splitting Steel. Um, so Splitting Steel is one of the better clearing skills uh, and it's going to be really powerful for you. Two things you're going to be focusing on here. Um, getting your links... Uh, but also making sure your weapon is a pretty good one. Um, so when you're playing steel skills, you're going to be either using a 200 sword or a 200 axe. I recommend the axes, but if you can't get that, use the sword. Um, so a really, really cool trick that you're going to continually use throughout the leveling, all through Axe 1 to 4, um, continually, uh, is going to be the Rustic Sash um, recipe. So if you take a white base uh, weapon, like a stone axe or a jade axe, you can see here those are pretty good, uh, and you trade it with a whetstone and either a magic or a rare rustic sash, it'll actually give you back a very, very good physical weapon. Uh, this method is good enough for weapons uh, to get you all the way through the campaign to when you can swap to a bleed slinger setup. Now, of course, you're going to be starting out, obviously, with Splitting Steel, uh, but when you get to Mobile's Cabin, you want to go back to town and pick up Shattering Steel. This is going to be the skill that you use from Axe 1 to 4. In addition to that, obviously you're going to have your three link here as, as noted, um, but you're also going to use uh, Ancestral Protector and Maim. So these are going to be really, really strong together. Uh, on single target, you should always be putting the totem down. It's a considerable amount of your single target, so make sure it's always down on bosses and on monsters which are pretty strong, like essences. Now I mentioned about weapons. This is very, very important that you pick these up and you get them right. So again, use the Rustic Sash um, recipe that I mentioned, uh, but you want to be looking for bases. So you can check the vendor, uh, or you can also pick them up off the floor. Um, either one is fine. Make sure you trade them in and you uh, get your damage upgrades consistently. So basically at level one, you should be using the stone axe. When you get near level nine, you should have the jade chopper ready. And this goes for basically the rest of the acts, as long as you're playing steel skills, uh, all the way up to act four. Try and keep upgrading your weapon at the intervals that is mentioned here. And uh, if you do that, you're gonna have a good time. Also things to look out for in act one, iron rings and rustic sash. Obviously you wanna be wearing a rustic sash. Movement speed boots are gonna uh, boost your clear speed a lot as well. Uh, but also, after you beat Mervale, you want to go back to town and you want to buy a carved wand. This is going to be very important later on. Make sure it has three sockets on it, ideally, um, but that's going to be really important. Do all the essences uh, that you come across, but also make sure that you're picking up uh, just random blue and rare items. Uh, make sure you identify the rares and then sell them to the vendor for transmuted alteration shards. This will become relevant uh, later on when you need to swap to Bleed Slinger. So in Act 2, um, you're obviously going to pick up, you know, all of the requisite gems here, so the Heralds, um, as well as trying to get a 3 link on the Ancestral Protector. It's not necessary. Anything listed with bonus, basically, you don't need, but it's going to increase your clear speed. Okay, so of course, you still want to be upgrading your weapons, as I mentioned. Uh, you want to start to try and fill out your resists, if possible, with resist rings, um, as well as, you know, keep picking up those items to sell for the vendor. Also in Act 2, you're going to need to buy Corrupting Fever and... Make sure to put that wand in on your offhand now and put the Corrupting Fever in it so you can start leveling it up. All right, Act 3. This is where you need to start really turning it up. You need to turn it on and you need to start focusing uh, because you're going to basically decide whether you're going to succeed or fail in Act 3 and 4. Uh, and if you succeed in Act 3 and 4, you're basically going to smash the entire campaign. So it's very important um, that you're very, very diligent in Act 3. Let's go over what you need to know. So Act 3 is the place in which uh, Four Links can start to spawn, and that's the main thing that you need to focus on. So you don't need to really worry about your Four Link for your Steel skill. You have enough damage just by upgrading your weapon to get through the campaign just fine. Uh, obviously, if you can manage it and you have the brain power to set up a Four Link while also collecting the Four Links I'm about to talk about, um, you can juice out some more damage and clear speed, um, but it's not needed. That's why all of the Four Links in here are listed as bonus. Make sure you're picking up all the gems otherwise, though, that aren't listed in bonus like Vulnerability. Okay. Um, so in Act 3, uh, as soon as you hit the Act, you want to be checking the vendor as frequently as possible. Basically, anytime you're in town and you've leveled up, 
um, after being like, you know, out on the map and then you're back in town, check the vendor. Look for four links of the correct colors. Uh, the colors are linked down here on the bottom. An important note is that the actual um, uh, equipment slots here, which have the gems in them, so I've got body armor listed for your attack, aren't important. Um, and two, yet way later on in the campaign, you can look, put any of the links anywhere as long as there's slots for it and it's not gonna screw up your um, leveling. Uh, so, you know, obviously if you get um, two green and a red on a helmet, you can use that instead. And that goes for later on as well. Just make sure that you have the colors and the links. That's all that matters. Okay. Uh, so when you're in Act 3, of course, there's a few other things to pick up uh, on and making sure you're identifying. So you want to be picking up those four links, that's really important, uh, but you also need to run the library in Act 3, which is instead when you get to the Imperial Gardens and you go left, you generally to find the lab trial, you also want to run the library, and then off of the library guy, you want to buy Exsanguinate for one transmute, and then put that also alongside Corrupting Fever in your wand and start leveling it up. Okay. Um, so also in Act 3 though, when you do the Solaris Temple, you get offered an amulet reward. Uh, make sure you pick the intelligence amulet reward so you have enough intelligence to use Spellslinger later on. Uh, hopefully the amulet is good. If it's not, it's fine. You can just go to the hideout and craft a resistance on it and it should be okay. You can upgrade it later when you get more um, rewards. Okay, Act 4. Um, so hopefully by now you have one or two of the four links you need for Spellslinger. If not, really turn it up, you know, start asking your friends, you know, start getting a little bit desperate here because you need those four links. It's really important, otherwise you're going to have a tough time. Uh, and that's why I'm not recommending this for new players because, you know, if you get it, get it a bit rough and you're not looking enough, you're going to get screwed. Okay, so in Act 4... Business as usual uh, on the steel skills, upgrade your weapon, all that good stuff, but really look for the four links. It's very important. Keep doing your uh, Rustic Sash recipe, all the good stuff. All right, so when Act 4 ends and you defeat Malachi uh, and you've done lab, so you will do the, the lab in about crystal veins with uh, Cruel Lab, so you want to do that, make sure that's done, and you want to spec into the bleed. Um, when Act 4 ends and you're level 38, you're going to pick up Greater Multiple Projectiles and Stone Golem as your quest rewards for finishing Act 4, socket them in, and then travel back to the library. So all of those blue items and rare items that you've been picking up and identifying, you're going to have the materials from those. So you're going to have the alterations and the transmutes. Uh, and then you're going to buy all of these gems and socket them into the four links you've been picking up, and you'll become a Spell Slinger Bleed Slinger build. Now... Also, in Act 4, Brutality will become available, but it costs Orbs of Alchemy here. So Orbs of Alchemy are kind of scarce early on. If you're lucky, you'll get one or two of them, and you can pick up Brutality. If you're unlucky and you don't get them, you can use Maim instead. But as soon as you get the Alks, swap over to Brutality, it's way more damage. Um, so obviously, this is the hardest part of the run, and in general, of the build. And it's going to be the most intimidating part. Uh, if you're not confident, I don't recommend starting this build. But if you are confident, you can pull it off. It's going to be really powerful. And you can check out my leveling video, uh, which will be linked down below. It becomes very strong, and you become a, basically a clear beast uh, throughout the acts. And it's pretty good single target as well. And it's going to be even better um, in the new patch. Okay, so in Act 5, it's basically just smooth sailing from here on out. The only other thing that you need to know, uh, other than basically trying to upgrade your resistances on your existing links while maintaining your colors, is that you're going to need to kill Utula in Act 5 in the town square. It's basically just above the reliquary. Uh, you can go up, you can kill him, and then you can go back to town, and you can pick up the Poacher's Aim Jewel for plus one Pierce, which is going to juice up your kinetic blast significantly uh, and kind of really make it strong. Okay, so then it's going to be basically just smooth sailing through the rest of the act. And to give you guys an idea of what your character will look like at the end of the act, I have my character here from my practice run. Uh, it's level 66. It's not even resist capped. I just killed Kitaba. Uh, it doesn't have Merc Lab. It's just got Cruel. Let's take a look at what Blood Aqueducts looks. This is a pretty good representation of uh, how a build clears. Okay. Um, to kind of take you guys through the mechanics of Spellslinger though, uh, so you guys kind of know what you're getting into, Spellslinger is essentially an aura, but instead of reserving to give you kind of an effect, it reserves to cast a spell when you use a wand skill. So you can see that Exsanguinate is casting here, and that's going to be pretty good. Now, assuming that you understand Corrupting Fever, um, you can keep Corrupting Fever basically on in, uh, basically infinitely uh, due to the regen from your Stone Golem, uh, as well as having Life Gain on hit on your Kinetic Blast. And um, it's going to be really, really powerful here, and you can see that it's really strong. So when we do here, I don't have Movement Speed Boots, but it's unfortunate, but you can see that we have really good clear, and this is going to transition really well into maps. I'm getting a bit of lag here, um, but you know, that's okay. Uh, we got the Bleed Explosions going on, and it's really, really strong. In terms of when you should ascend for um, Cruel Lab, I generally like to do it somewhere in Act 8 when I feel strong. Make sure you have a reasonable amount of life, though, so you don't get killed. So you can see here the clear is pretty good. You're basically going to be one-shotting packs, and that's really nice to have on your League Starter in white maps. Okay, so you've gotten through the story. Congrats. Let's take a look at the leveling tree so you guys can get a pretty good idea of how to allocate your points. This is all going to be available in the description as well.
All right, so let's take a look at leveling trait. Okay, so uh, in Act 1 here, you're going to be playing Steel Skills, and the Duelist is a really, really good ascendancy because it gets a lot of damage early on. You can get tons of physical damage, uh, and it's going to make it so that your Act 1 is really, really easy and it's really, really fast. Um, so you can blast through there, you're going to pick up these nodes here, uh, you'll be able to respec them later, don't worry. Next up, you're going to want to get Martial Experience uh, next, uh, in Act 2, and you're going to want to use the Mastery, which makes it so you get more damage against bosses, it's going to make you smash Vile, and it's going to be really, really strong. After that, in Act 3, um, you want to be picking up uh, Relentless, as well as Constitution and plus 50 life. Those are your main priorities. And then start pathing over here. Uh, in Act 4, you're going to want to pick up Resolute Technique, as well as Vanquisher. Those are going to be more damage, as well as uh, you know not missing anymore. It's going to be really nice quality of life. Uh, and overall, you should be pretty strong here. Okay, when you make the transition to Slinger, uh, you're going to respec all of um, all of this for now. Uh, you can respec it later. Um... You can also just not spec in a Resolute Technique as well if you don't need the damage. Uh, or you can not go into Tireless as soon because you're going to get this again later. Um, but the primary thing to pick up here is respecting these points over here, Destroyer and Two Hand, as well as Martial Experience and the Mastery. And you're going to put those points into more damage on Veteran Soldier as well as Iron Will. And you know you could probably just go like this uh, instead and then pick this up later. But you guys are going to get the point here. So the main transition here is going to be um, you know dropping these and then uh, picking up the damage here, as well as Iron Will. Now, uh, important to note here is that these, these nodes here do give you reduced cost of skills, which can help you out if you're losing too much life from your Kinetic Plastic Sanguinate setup, uh, which can be pretty sweet. Now, you will notice that you do still have a bit of janky pathing here. Uh, later on, when you get some uh, more respect points, uh, you can swap over to basically having pathing like this, which is going to give you more attack speed for your Spell Slinger, uh, which is super duper sweet. Um, but for now, you just stay with this until you get the respect points, which isn't too bad. Okay, um, let's move on to uh, Act 5 Slinger. So basically just follow along with the trees and you're going to get more and more powerful. Um, the only kind of interesting point here is that I'm getting Poacher's Aim. Um, the other few notes here is that your auras will kind of transition a little bit as you're playing Spell Slinger and you pick up Reservation nodes here. Um, so in Act, I believe it's 7, you pick up the Aura Mastery wheel up here and you get a ton more Reservation and suddenly you can start running a 50% Aura plus Spell Slinger plus a Herald uh, and maybe even fit War Banner in because you're taking War Banner Reservation I think a little bit later on, uh, and you can kind of really start to juice up your character. Make sure you pay attention to your auras, try and fit as much damage auras in as possible, uh, and kind of throughout the campaign. And then in the end, you're going to have a pretty powerful tree, which is fairly durable as well. Um, overall, I don't have any items on, and I have 2k life. Pretty good. When you get the items on there, you're probably going to have like 3.5k, which is pretty sweet. I don't know why there's stuff in there. That's weird. Uh, but this is the tree. Should be good. All right, so that's leveling, guys. Hopefully, you guys uh, are pretty happy with that. Uh, when you hit maps, though, we're going to start the gear progression. All right, so let's go through the gear progression. This is, of course, all going to be listed here. You can follow along nicely. Um, so when you get into maps, uh, there's going to be a few uniques that you might want to look into sniping if they're nice and cheap. So when I think nice and cheap, I think, you know, 5C or less. That's kind of my threshold. Maybe you can pay a little bit more for the hoops. We'll see. So the two uniques I'm talking about here are Lahoop of All, which is a really, really strong um, unique which you can use to level. So it's got Resistance, Attributes, which gives you more damage on, uh, on your Spell Slinger because of Iron Will. And it's also got Elemental Resistances, which can help you cap your resists early and you know prioritize other things in other slots um, so those are generally a little bit more expensive because a lot of builds can use them but if they're cheap pick them up uh, the other thing you can get here is the magnate so the magnate is generally always cheap so it says it's going to give you 23 all res if you get 200 strength you do um, and it's also giving you more strength for spell slinger and more physical damage and flasks so this is a sweet belt you should definitely pick it up uh, it's really really worth it and i think it's going to be probably like 1c so pretty awesome obviously if they're expensive don't get them but if you're not you should pick them up uh, okay so when you hit the Atlas, uh, you're basically going to be checking a few things off, and you're going to swap over to my Kinetic Blast um, League Start Tree here, which is basically going to be the next stage. Um, so you started out as Kinetic Blast in Act 4 and 5, and now you're going to be juicing it up for the remainder of the, um, the early maps. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see here that the tray uh, does kind of obviously progress all the way up to level 81, uh, and you can kind of um, work your way through that there. Uh, but the main thing here is that you're going to want to be upgrading your items as well as acquiring cluster jewels and traditional jewels. And I'll tell you guys through how to, how to get them now. Okay, so you can see here that I've got two carved ones. These are going to be your first priority. They give you plus one level to all of physical spells, gems, uh, and that's basically going to be your exsanguinate and your corrupting fear, which is incredibly important. Uh, you're definitely going to want to be taking yourself through that and like, getting them as soon as possible. So just to give you guys an idea, plus one physical spell skills are very, very easy to get. Um, you'll be able to get them off trade super duper easily. Uh, they'll be available, and all you need to do is cross the physical damage of a time multiplier. Now, 
This mod is a crafted mod from Betrayal, so you want to be doing all the Betrayal encounters you come across until you get it. Maybe a friend gets it before you, uh, but you know, overall, this is going to give you a lot of damage. Until you get the mod, though, just craft attack speed on it instead, uh, and then when you get the mod, you know, put that on there. Bonus points, if you can get some physical damage over time multiplier on it just normally, or some damage over time multiplier, or you get some attack speed on it naturally, that's uh, bonus points. But you know, obviously those will be way more expensive. Um, to give you guys a note here, all of the items that you need and need to craft and like anything like that, there's gonna be tips on how to make these also in the source of truth here, my spreadsheet. Uh, so for example, the wand here, there's kind of like some notes on this, uh, as well as how to craft some of the more um, kind of complex items and kind of what to do and how to get them. Okay, so let's go on to the next part here. Um, so let's let's just step through each piece here, um, so you guys have a really good idea. So the next part you want to probably want to be um, looking at getting is going to be your clusters. So the clusters uh, reasonably easy to acquire. Uh, it's not as scary as some people make it out to be. Clusters are actually pretty easy to get. Um, so you can see here that I've got a priority list here. Just follow the priority list, uh, and you can kind of get through it nicely. Uh, but clusters are absolutely paramount to your success. Uh, you're going to run out of stuff to allocate on the tree very, very quickly without cluster jewels. So you need to get them as soon as possible, and it's going to make your build way, way stronger. Uh, let's talk about how to acquire them. Okay, so the clusters of choice here um, basically uh, can be basically anything on this list here. So you can see large clusters here I have listed. You can get any two of these mods. Um, so you can buy them off another player, or you can also self-craft them. If you want to self-craft them, make sure you're using 8 passive if possible. Um, you know, you if you're buying them, use 8 passive if possible as well. It's going to save you points. If there's none available, go with 9 passive. It's not ideal, but you can go with it. Um, if you're crafting them self, you can use Jagged Fossils. On average, it's about 5 Jagged Fossils to get it. Uh, not too bad. Uh, the best mods are Battle Hardened and Master the Fundamentals. Uh, but, you know, you can go for other mods as well. It's not a big deal. Um, so very, very easy to make these. Uh, they're probably going to run you about 5C for the base, and then the fossils might cost a little bit more. Uh, alternatively, you can just buy them. Medium clusters, it's a similar kind of story here, except the minimum item level is 68 instead of 50, so they will be in maps that you need to acquire these. Um, these ones you can get 4 or 5 passive, it's fine to get either. Uh, and what you're looking for is any two prefixes here. Now, in order to acquire the prefixes, you can again either buy them or you can craft them with aberrant fossils. It's about six on average to get uh, two of the two of the ones from this list, uh, which is basically going to be fine for you as long as you're rolling with it. So that's super, super awesome. So you've got the clusters, you've got the ones, your damage is going to be way, way higher here uh, and it's going to be really, really powerful. So what's next on the list? Let's talk about the Crimson Jewels. Okay, so the Jewels are definitely a big part of your damage as well as survivability later on, and picking them up is gonna be really, really important. Now, these may be in somewhat demand, uh, so there's a few options that you can use here uh, instead of the specific ones that I'm using here. So you can use any combination of any of the four mods, you just need two of them. So you can do Increase Fizz, Damage Over Time Multiplier, or Fizz Damage Over my Time Multiplier, or, um, or Life. Now, if there's none, there's absolutely none available, or they're like, really expensive for some crazy reason you cannot buy them you can craft them yourself with jagged fossils although it is a little bit expensive to do it it's about 16 fossils on average uh, to get the physical damage over time multiply it with the physical damage um, so you know that's the last ditch effort if you can't buy them and they're insanely expensive just craft them yourself but i have a feeling they're gonna be pretty cheap okay um, so the next item here where we're going to pick up here is going to be the Delirium Essence Gloves. Um, so Delirium Essences are essentially a crafting item that you can buy. Um, you should buy it yourself and then you buy a base. The base you're looking for is Apothecary Gloves and you just use the essence on it and craft life. Now these gloves are a lot of your damage. Uh, you can see here that um, it's a big chunk of it. The way this functions essentially is that you're going to have your four link corrupting fever uh, and when you sock it in the gloves it's going to give you 30 percent more damage from the delirium essence mod so it's very very important uh, that you can get it now if you can't get apothecary gloves for whatever reason um, you can also just go with whatever gloves but i'd recommend trying to get the apothecary gloves for the extra damage uh, and these are going to serve you well uh, for quite a long time so it's super super awesome uh, which is pretty cool all right, so that's pretty much uh, the, the main bulk of it. Uh, there's a few other items that you can pick up here, which is really gonna juice you up. Uh, so for example, an amulet with a pretty good anoint on it. Um, so you can get 25% damage of a time multiplier. You can either buy it or you can craft it with alterations and then craft life. Uh, you also wanna be anointing it uh, as well uh, when you are on a budget with um, a criminy, uh, which is two blacks and a clear. So it's gonna be around like 10C max. Uh, and that's gonna be really good for damage as well. Uh, so that's going to be a really nice amulet. It's not influenced or anything like that, and it's going to be uh, a reasonable uh, pickup. So the other thing here you might want to look into getting are your rings. 
Uh, so similar to the gloves, you can actually just use a Delirium Essence on rings and it'll give you 15 damage over time multiplier, which is a lot of damage. Uh, you want to use this on a resist base that has the resist that you need for your build. Uh, and then you also want to craft life on that. So it's a really easy accessible damage that you can get there. Uh, the second one here is a little bit harder. You're going to need to get an item level 75 Warlord Ring. Uh, basically, you can get it off trade. Make sure it's the resist you want. Uh, and then you're going to go into Harvest. So basically, all of your harvests, and you want to use Reforge Caster on it. So Reforge Caster has an incredibly high chance to give you vulnerability on hit, which is going to juice up your build significantly. And it's really easy to self-craft. I think it's about four or five Reforge Casters on average. Uh, so you can make this yourself. I wouldn't recommend buying it. Generally, they're very expensive to buy, but making them yourself is very easy. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much going to be it. Everything else you can either buy or, you know, just pick up off the floor. Uh, and those are the main things. So it's basically under 1x for basically all this stuff. I, obviously, pending any massive, crazy hype um, inflation on any of the items here. But it shouldn't be expensive to get this started. And uh, that's going to rock you uh, a really clean 1.3 million DPS on clear. And without frenzies, you're going to have 1 million DPS, which is super, super solid. And it's going to cover you, carry you all the way to low reds with that amount of DPS. Uh, and you're going to be pretty fine. You also have a, a respectable amount of movement speed you're a little on the squishy side um, but you know that is what it is you need to get the requisite amount of damage before you can really get going um, you are running a uh, molten shell here and this POB, um, but you know, overall, uh, that's pretty much how it is. Now, okay, so there is one important thing to notice. So right here, I'm using a spell slinger setup with the exsanguinate, like we've talked through. And this POB here, I'm only using corrupting fever. So there is a decision point that will come up when you're playing the build in maps and you're making your upgrades. Um, so if you think your damage is high enough, you can sacrifice your spell slinger setup and get rid of it and sock it in more auras and molten shell to increase your defenses here. So if you take a look at my calcs, uh, without more shell on, um, you can see that it's quite high. And then I take more shell off. So it's basically like a lot more EHP while it's up. Obviously, it's not up all the time, um, but it will increase your survivability here. Now, on the flip side, though, you will sacrifice single target. Um, an exsanguinate full link, obviously, it consumes a lot of mana uh, reservation. But with Iron Will, it's very, very powerful. And it will give you closer to 2 million DPS as opposed to 1.3 million DPS with that uh, spell setup. setup. Uh, so it's going to be down to you. Do you want to sacrifice some of your single target for more clear damage uh, as well as survivability? Or do you want to keep the slinger in for longer and then also maintain that single target damage? Uh, if you're trying to push um, you know, T16s, you probably want to stay slinging for as long as possible to kind of keep that damage up um, but you know obviously if you don't want to sling uh, you can swap that out and you know farm yellows or like low reds and really juice it up okay so there you go um, so that's guys that guys is going to cover that uh, first portion of the build so that's going to take you through to the point in which you transition to tornado shot here um, so this basically is going to cover this part here uh, obviously you can see this and read along with it uh, if you need any additional information Okay, let's talk about the Tornado Shot uh, CF transition. So this is obviously the namesake of the build, Corrupting Fever Tornado Shot. You swap after you get a number of incredibly powerful items which aren't too expensive. So we've covered already that the build is probably gonna be about 1x to 2x up to this point. Uh, and maybe even cheaper if you craft the items yourself and you get really uh, really good uh, snipes. Um, so it's gonna be pretty easy to acquire all these items and get pumping and get into an Atlas Strat which you think is good. Now. After you're farming with um, Kinetic Blast and you're accumulating some currency, this is the point when you start wanting to pick up some really good Tornado Shot items. Uh, and all of them are self-craftable, fortunately. Let's go to the items that you're going to need. These are the items you need minimum before you swap to Tornado Shot. Okay, so the first thing you want to do and your first board of call is actually not the bow. Uh, you can basically start upgrading your Kinetic Blast gear um, basically ASAP, right? Um, so you can yoink some of the upgrades from the, the Tornado Shot build and start slapping them on your Kinetic Blast character. Bam! Uh, so you get more and more damage and more and more survivability. Uh, the only thing that you obviously need to swap to TS is the bow and the quiver, uh, which we'll cover in a second here. But the first thing I want to talk about here is the Six Link Redeemer Aura Chest. Um, so this one here is obviously there's going to be a craft boot, um, section here. Essentially, we'll swap over the TSPOB here uh, and I'll kind of talk you through it. Um, this chest piece here, uh, here it is here. So you want a high armor base. Astral Plate is preferred. Obviously, that'll be very expensive though early. So any high armor base, which is a six link, you know, try and pick it up for like one or two X max. Um, you know, if you want to splash the cash on an astral base, be my guest. Uh, astral plate, uh, but you know, basically, all you need to do is get a six link, slam it with a redeemer orb, and use alt to uh, so bound fossils to roll T1 increased um, effective auras. Now, this is going to absolutely turbo juice you uh, because it gives you way, way more damage. You can see it's 12.5% more damage. Uh, if I swap over to my <laughs> my actual um, corrupting fever here, you can actually see the damage. Um, 
on your crypto DPS. So it's, it's a 500k DPS, uh, which is very, very impactful. So you want to get this basically as your first item, uh, and then you just craft life on it, and you're sweet. Uh, now, when you're playing Kinetic Blast, you can actually now use a six lane Kinetic Blast, which is basically going to give you way more quality of life. You can put in like a ton more projectiles. Uh, you can put in um, Calling Strike. You can put in Maim. Uh, you can all sorts of stuff like that. The opportunities just open up here once you get the six link, and you can really start juicing it up, and you can get uh, become a Giga Chad basically. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna want to want uh, before you swap over to Tornado Shot here is uh, a level. Oh, sorry, let's swap this around a little bit more here. Uh, is a uh, an amulet um, which basically has plus one uh, to strength gems or a plus one uh, to physical gems. This is basically gonna make your damage way way higher, and it's really gonna juice you up, and uh, it's gonna be really really awesome. So on this amulet, um, ideally you're gonna need to have the craft. Uh, which basically enables Corrupting Fever, uh, which is the Consumes No Mana While Focused craft. Now, this craft comes off Katarina, uh, so you need to basically get the craft from a Katarina amulet and unveil it, or pay someone who has it. Um, but overall, that's going to be the kind of goal here. And you need to get that before you swap the Tornado Shot. Uh, but before, when you're just playing Kinetic Blast, you can just use the plus one gems, and that's going to be super sweet for you. And then obviously when you get the craft, craft it up and then swap the TS. Uh, you want to be allocating the uh, acrimony still, uh, and it's going to be stupid good. Okay, so next up, you want to acquire these all three. Uh, these are the three items that you need before you swap to Tornado Shot, guaranteed. Uh, so you need to get at least a level one in power, the higher the better, uh, to kind of give you guys an idea. So this POB here is with a level one in power. Um, you know, if you get a way higher uh, in power, it's going to be way better. Um, so if I, where's, my, where's my weapon here? But, so you can see here, level one in power. If you take this level three, you know, it's like a lot more damage. Uh, but level one minimum, uh, is very, very important as your sixth link. And then you also want to craft the bow. Um, so the bow is actually incredibly easy to craft. It's a hundred percent deterministic. Not many items can say that. And it costs anywhere between, you know, roughly 10 to 15 X. Uh, this is very, very dependent on the actual price of the, the materials and the bases. Um, but you know, it remains to be seen, but right now with our current knowledge, it should cost around 10 to 15 X and it's hundred percent deterministic. It can't really cost more unless you get super unlucky on the imprints. Um, but you know, overall, that's kind of where it's at. Now this is going to give you a pretty damn close to best in slot bow, uh, which is really awesome. You're going to be using this bow for the rest of the game basically. Uh, and that's really, really nice. So you want to invest in making sure your bow is mint. Now. This is where I'm going to introduce a very important fact, and it's going to be a pit for, for a lot of people who don't actually realize. So one of the biggest issues with Corrupting Fever is its attribute requirements. Attribute requirements are a massive pain, and getting enough intelligence and dexterity is a big problem. Now, one way to cheese and get around this is to use a low-level base with a low dexterity requirement. Um, so overall, when you're crafting your bow, and by extension, when you're buying your wands um, from the slinger portion, when you're getting your plus one wands, look for low intelligence requirement and low dexterity requirement items. In addition to that, don't level up stuff like dash or blood rage, uh, because it's going to increase your dex requirements and force in gross stuff on your tree or on your gear. So when you're crafting your bow, make sure you look for a six link clean base or warlord base. Uh, which has a low dex requirement. So stuff like, um, you know, 156 dex, that's no good. Now, if you're super desperate and you're willing to take the 10 or 15 exalt hit and having to recraft the bow, you can do it with a high dex bow. But I wouldn't recommend it. Look for a lower dex bow and then invest in it and it's going to be a really good bow. It's going to serve you the entire game and it's super, super awesome. So as I mentioned, this bow is 100% deterministic. There's going to be a link to a video made by a creator called Elisha. He shows you how to make it in game step by step. But I also have a step by step here uh, in this sheet here, which you can follow along with and it's going to be super effective. Okay, so the last item you're going to need here, uh, before you can swap over to Tornado Shot, is going to be uh, a Quiver. Um, so this Quiver here is basically a 2-mod Quiver. Um, it's got Projectile Speed on it and a chance to grant Fancy Charge on a hit from a unique enemy. So traditionally, uh, you don't, I mean, I, you don't absolutely need this, but it's going to give you way more single target on stuff like Conquerors and Sirius. Um, so this is basically the mandatory mod here is projectile speed tornado shot doesn't feel very good without projectile speed So projectile speed minimum now When you get into wanting to do single target damage though You're gonna want to maintain frenzies on bosses and in order to do that you're gonna need frenzy charge on hit 
Uh, and in order to get that, you're going to need this quiver. Um, so this quiver is deterministically craftable. However, it is not cheap. If you can buy this, you're going to want to buy it because it's, you know, a one mod with another mod, you know, it's not too bad. It should appear, but if there's big demand for it, you can craft it yourself. So you want to pick up an Elder Quiver base of your choice. I like two point. Uh, and basically what you're looking for here is hybrid adjust speed, frenzy charge on hit, and open prefix on to craft life on. How do you make that? So basically what you do is you alteration spam frenzy charge on hit with alterations. And then you isolate the mod by annulling it to one mod. You can imprint it if you want, but I don't think the mod is rare enough to warrant that, especially if Cranky Camurals are rare early on. So basically you imprint it, you want to get it to one mod. And then what you do is you craft suffixes cannot be changed and you imprint it then. This is mandatory. So basically you've saved the quiver in a state where it has frenzy charge on hit, and then it also has suffixes cannot be changed. So it's locked and now you saved it. Now you use harvest reforge speed. And it's very, very likely that you're either gonna hit attack speed or projectile speed. Basically, you're gonna keep doing this until you hit a high amount of projectile speed. If you miss, you can use your imprint to set it back, you re-imprint it and then harvest it again. And this is a deterministic way to get high projectile speed plus frenzy on hit uh, and then craft life. So that's the quiver. So after you get these items, you're gonna be able to swap over to Tornado Shot. There's a few other items that you can pick up in the meantime while you're playing Kinetic Blast um, or while you're trying to swap over to TS. Uh, and that is like a circle of guilt as well as improved clusters, more resistances everywhere, and that's gonna be super duper strong as well. Basically everything you need to know should be in these uh, spreadsheets here. Hopefully there's enough detail for you guys. Uh, enjoy. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the high tier upgrading and then we're gonna do an overview of all the POBs. I'm gonna explain a few more nuances uh, and then we're gonna round out. Okay, um, so you can see here with the upgrading, obviously there's a ton of big gains that you can make here. Um, but the build really starts to come into its own after you hit the upgrading point. You can kind of choose the direction you'd like to go in. Um, obviously it's a no brainer to upgrade your empower from one to like a three or a four. It's gonna give you way more damage. Uh, you can go for an awakened plus two amulet, start anointing charisma. And once you get enough reservation, you can actually activate determination and become an absolute chad and be basically invulnerable to physical damage. It's very, very nice. You can acquire a two mod herald of purity ring. You can acquire a watcher's eye. There's lots of things you can do, but when you're at this point, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. And there's also going to be a few more things that you can talk about here. Um, so calling strike fist multi gloves, for example, very, very good. Um, you know, the RMR helmet, there is a priority list here. I recommend following that. That's obviously what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but you can kind of go with whatever you think the build needs and whatever is frustrating you at the time. Uh, and then obviously into the max tree and infinity, uh, you can really just like go nuts with it and it's going to be strong. Now, okay, let's talk a little bit about the overall build and kind of what this build excels at and kind of why it's so powerful, but also talk a little bit about the POBs. Um, so early on, it's got a reasonably strong early game. It's going to be one of the better map clearers early on. It's going to be a little squishy uh, early on, especially when you swap to TS. It's still going to be squishy, but after you start upgrading your gear, after you make the initial transition, you're going to become an absolute machine uh, because you're going to have so much mitigation uh, and it's going to be really, really powerful. But the main thing I want to talk about here is going to be referencing the, um, the, the high budget version, because this is where I think the build obviously is going to be at for a lot of players after you start getting some of the really good gear. This is with Awaken or Robbed gear. It's not absolutely insane, um, but it is, you know, obviously this is probably like a reasonably expensive um, kind of set of gear. Uh, let me talk about why the build is so powerful and why I think it's going to be one of the better picks uh, for doing Scourge League as well as, you know, Wave 30 Simulacrum. So the first thing here you can see is my armor total. Um, so if we turn off Molten Shell here, uh, we can see that we have a really, really high maximum hit for physical with basically nothing on. Um, and we can like I have endurance charges off, but we can turn them on and you can see it's even better here. But even without endurance charges, of which I have, I think, five, um, and I have enduring composure to sustain them, um, I'm very, very tanky to physical. This is a big plus. You're going to be able to stand in Minotaur Slams. Uh, you're going to basically AFK and come your smoke phase. Uh, and you have the damage, enough damage to also do bosses as well. Six million is plenty to do formed and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's going to be a pretty effective character. Now, Elemental, obviously, is not super duper high yet. Um, but we do have some max res, which does help out with that. Uh, but as soon as Molten Shell's on, it's just a, it's just over. It's a game changer. You're basically just going to be immortal during a Molten Shell, which is going to be up 60 to 65% of the time, uh, which is quite nice. 
uh, and it's going to be really powerful. So you become very, very tanky with some of the best clear in the game, and you also have explosions, massive movement speed, and, you know, it's just, oh my goodness, very, very powerful. Now, I want to I wanna gush a little bit more, if you guys will allow me. Uh, so when you really start investing, the reason I'm so excited about this build is when you get to the real high end. The real high end, obviously the damage improves, that goes without saying, but there's a few very, very key points here which makes this build stand among the others, in my opinion, above the others. First of all, you're stun immune. Very nice. The other thing is you're immune to critical damage, essentially. Crazy. Because you can take the 30% reduced extra damage from crit, from armor mastery, and you can also get uh, reduced critical damage taken uh, on your watch's eye because there's only one damage mod for your build. Alternatively, you can even drop more damage and get bleed immune. You could, you know, mit, like match and swap and do whatever what you want, but I recommend getting crit immune. There's a lot of bosses which do a lot of more damage when they crit, and I think in Skirt, it's going to be very spooky if you do get crit. So obviously we boast an absolute colossal amount of armor. And um, once you do get into the very high end, you can obviously start sustaining, um, you know, flasks with mage blood. And it just gets absolutely ridiculous. Um, so overall, the selling points of this build are that it's going to have a reasonable power trajectory. Uh, for players who are experienced with crafting and currency earning. Uh, it's a mapper first and foremost, but can, can become a bosser once it gets high amount of gear, which, which is actually a pretty good point in my opinion. Uh, it has pretty much the best clear in the game, uh, or it's at least very high up there. It's very hard to beat Tornado Shot with explosions. Uh, and then it also has reasonable damage, but above all, it's very, very tanky. Once you get Mage Blood, you also become Curse Immune, which is also another big point, which is super awesome. And of course, Mage Blood is going to be expensive, but look at this movement speed, man. My goodness. Okay. Um, so it's really, really cool though, because you basically just have upgraded versions of your already existing items and they just continue to get better. Obviously the boots are an exception here, but you can see here, the bow is the same. The quiver, for the most part, it's got some more life on it, it's got some chaos rays on it, it's the same. Um, you know, the helmet is the same, but it has elevated RMR. Um, you know, it's, it's basically the same gear, just upgraded a bit by bit. So it's pretty awesome, it's got a pretty smooth power trajectory, and I definitely think it's going to be a good one. Now, I'll end again on the disclaimer as well as the material. Um, so if you're not confident in anything you've seen in this video, or you're not confident in problem solving, in crafting, if currency, uh, big currency items scare you, not the build for you. Now, having said that though, there's quite a lot of material here for you to get through, and I'm going to be available for question asking on stream at League Start, as well as in Discord. Um, so if you need any help, I will be there. Uh, it's going to be, in my opinion, one of the better maps, uh, clearest for Scourge. Uh, and in addition to that, I also have a full one, uh, act one to 10 leveling, um, kind of session out, which is on YouTube. You can view that. It's going to be in the description below. You can see the formed in less, uh, gear than, um, the high, the high budget one. Uh, and you can also see hundred percent delirium in less gear than the high budget one on my channel. Uh, and it's also getting mega buffed in 3.16. So with all that said, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough, not a guide. Uh, hopefully you guys are hyped for Scourge, and this video was at least okay. I didn't have much time, but here it is. Until next time, sub if you want more content on it. I'll be updating my progress as I go, and make sure you like the video if you found this useful. Thank you so much. See ya.